Um, I think our minds are on the plane home now, definitely. Um, but I don't think that was the case at the start of the day. I mean, we, we didn't play particularly well today. There was a lot of wides with the ball, um, in between some good stuff as well. But, uh, you know, I think we should have made a better fist of chasing that down. I don't think that was an unattainable target on this wicket. But, um, you know, to lose five wickets in the first 15 overs is, is criminal, really, when you're chasing down a... a big score and um, you know, from that moment on it was always going to be hard work to win the game. Andrew, is there quite a lot to ponder on the flight home about the one-day squad and the strategy for the World Cup? Well, I mean, the first thing to ponder is obviously the, the kind of who's fit and who's not fit. I think mean, that's, that's going to be important to, um, to see exactly where we are and have a, a clear idea of, of who our best 11 players available are. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've got to think about what we haven't done well in this at all. Um, and we've also got to think about how to adapt our game to the conditions in the subcontinent pretty quickly. So, yeah, you're right, there is a few things for us to think about. Um, as I said man, before this game started, I still feel very confident we can do well out there. Um, but, uh, you know, we need to play in a, in a different manner to, to how we've done it over here. Of all the injury concerns, is Owen Morgan the most serious? I think so, yeah. I mean, uh, obviously he's got a broken finger. Um, he's going to see a specialist tomorrow to decide, you know, what the best course of action is to, to remedy that situation. And um, there's obviously got to be a chance that he's, he's not going to feature. He's a particularly hard man to replace him, isn't he? Yeah, he is, yeah. I mean, obviously in, in those conditions as well, being able to clear the ropes in the manner that he does, um, you know, it, it's it's a big loss for us potentially. Hopefully, you know, there'll be an opportunity for him to play. But uh, if we if he isn't available, someone's going to have to fill those shoes. So you could have make, you know, some tough decisions to make over injuries and when players are going to be available, isn't it? You've got a, a tough two days. Yeah, we're going to have to think through exactly. I mean, um, you know, at what stage is the cut cut off point that uh, the guy needs to be replaced? I mean, I, we're pretty confident that most of our other injuries are going to be fine. Um, but uh, Owen Morgan, we're not sure of at that at this stage. Was it, was it, you know, was it strange that he played in two games with, with injury? How, how did that kind of happen? No, he just thought he it was bruised. You know, he he, he kind of went on, got on with it. Um, but just when he sort of was expecting to start getting better, it, it was feeling worse, and it was restricting his his play a bit more. So he they went for a, an X-ray, and I think everyone was reasonably surprised to see that it was you know it was quite a substantial fracture. Have you and Andy talked about possible replacements or what you might do? Uh, we have, but we've got to see what the specialist says first. I mean, there's no point in thinking too far ahead if he is available. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll be sitting down with the selectors when we get back to England. Prior to backing down the order, was that significant or just a way of accommodating Davies? No, that was just a way of accommodating Davies. Obviously, uh, Matt's a very versatile cricketer. He's batted at six quite a lot before, so... Um, you know, we felt he would find it easier coming in against the spinners in the middle than Steve. Um, and Steve's done the majority of his batting at the top of the order. So it was just the way of, that we felt was the best chance of winning the game, to be honest. Does, does left-hand yourself have how difficult it would be to bat with a broken back finger? Um, well, it's, I don't know because I haven't had one. But, it, it, you know, obviously the, the bottom-handed shots are more of a problem. So the pulls and cuts and all that sort of stuff. You would have heard that the three Pakistan players have been I mean, 10, 7, 5, but effectively 5 years was the suspension. Is that what you're expecting? Was it more leader than you're expecting or more? Um, look, I think the important thing with any um, punishments for, for those sort of things is that it sends a very strong message to people that might be tempted to do it in the future that uh, if you do it, your career is going to be substantially reduced, if not completely destroyed. Um, and, you know, I think this has sent a pretty strong seg signal out there. Um, obviously, the, there's always potential for it to be a stronger signal and, and handing out life bans, but the guys have had to listen to the evidence. Uh, we're not party to all that evidence. Um, I think it's a good thing that the game's cleaning itself up. That can only be a good thing. Do you think enough is being done to clean it up? Well, I think they're starting to. Um, you know, I think that's at the start of the process. And you know, only the ICC and the relevant authorities know how far they're willing to dig and, and how thorough they're going to be on it. But I would urge them to be as thorough as they can possibly be because, you know, as we've said before, if there's a kind of a whiff of something 
dodgy going on, then that, that degrades the whole sport. Just on the series again, I mean, same score as in 2009, I would be actually, but with the injuries and the kind of context, it doesn't feel like you as a camp feel all that demoralised by it. Um, no, I mean, clearly we're far from happy about it. And there was certainly, you know, three or four of the games that at the halfway point, we were in a very good position to win the game. So to not um, come through and win more of those is very disappointing. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, look, you know, one of the uh, real benefits we've had in one day cricket over the last couple of years is that we've had a very sort of settled side and people have known their roles pretty well. Um, that was obviously disrupted in this series and, and we've had to blood some young guys who are inexperienced and they will have gained a lot from it. So moving forward, there's there's a lot to take out of the series, but we're, we're clearly disappointed with the way it ended. Does Tash in a way, the Ashes I don't think so, no. I mean, uh, they're, they're two different forms of the game and that Ashes victory was, you know, was incredibly special and one that will save us forever. Um, and, you know, you just you talk to people out there and they're all going, you know, great tour, great tour, even though we've just lost 6-1. So, um, you know, we're obviously disappointed with the one-day results, but we, we, we'll get onto that play. And certainly those of us that are involved in the Ashes and still feel very proud of what we've achieved. Going into the World Cup, what's the one thing that you, that you really need to improve on coming off the 6-1 series last year? Um, well, I mean, there are a number of things that we need to improve on. I just think ultimately we had we had times when we bowled well and times that we batted well. We didn't do it when it mattered. Um, so, you know, making sounder decisions under pressure is is clearly something that's of vital importance in the World Cup because they're all high pressure games, um, and we didn't do that well enough in this series.